Okay, this is a, um, a demo of the ThinLinks management software which I've got loaded up here now. Uh, if you look at the screen you can see there's two devices that have been uh, discovered by TMS which is what we call ThinLinks management software TMS. There's a um, Intel small form factor device which shows up as TLX NUC32 and I've given it a name, uh, NUC5PPYH, which is the model number for that particular NUC. Also, there's a Raspberry Pi. So all the Raspberry Pis, if you've got 10 or 20 of them, they all show up under the heading TLX RPI. And any Intel small form factors would appear under this TLX NUC32. So you can see um, various information is displayed here. Um, there's a status window. IP address, the mode that it's in, both of these are in HDX mode, the server that they're connected to, and um, you can see that, that there, the firmware version 4.4.0, which is the latest version, the type of license, it's either a trial or it's permanent, and the trial's for two months. Uh, the ex support expiry date is the day the trial ends or the day that your license runs out. So a license is uh, for three years where you get um, firmware updates and uh, support, online support, self-help support for three years. After three years it keeps working normally but if you want um, new firmware updates you have to buy another license. We keep the license pr price very low so it makes it affordable for people. Uh, MAC address is there as well and then under hotfixes we can see both these devices have one hotfix each. Then client version here you can see there's slightly different ones running 7.13.0 and the other one 7.13.1. The client version is the TMS client which is the client N of the TMS um, connection that runs on the device uh, inside TLX OS. So it's a way that TMS communicates with the client. So from time to time we update the client version between firmware upgrades. So that's what's happened here. This We've had a client upgrade and um, it's supplied as a hotfix. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Uh, time server, that's the time server that we're connected to. Our description, uh, you can use more details for a description if you want for each device apart from the host name. Um, and I haven't uh, bothered to set that. Type of discovery, I've got auto. In the time zone, Australia, Melbourne, kernel version, in the TFM version is the ThinLinks firmware maintenance version. So that's useful information to, to have displayed. So okay, when you we've got three different versions of TMS. Um, one is the Windows version, which you can see running here. And we have two different Linux versions. One runs on CentOS or Red Hat, and the other one runs on Ubuntu or Debian. So this is the Windows version. Uh, when you first install it, you have to, you'll see this um, configuration box appear. And it has a default TMS folder. You can set this to whatever you like, but we recommend that you just leave it at the default. The SSL port that TMS and TMS client brought um, communicate over. So that's the secure connection between the client, which is running TLX OS, and TMS itself. UDP broadcast port is um, the way we discover uh, the device using UDP um, broadcasting. And the broadcast frequency is the default 5 seconds. A lot of people have, especially large companies, have a proxy server on the network and um, for TMS to be able to license their devices it has to be able to connect to the license server which is in the cloud 
and if there's a proxy server in place um, that would block the connection so you need to configure the proxy server connection here so you put in the host name or IP address of your proxy server on your network port number in some cases proxy servers require authentication in which case you put your username and password in here as well so I'm not using a proxy server so I, I don't need to select those also you need to decide what you want to see on the screen here what these different uh, columns have that you want displayed and there's a list of things here and all you do is tick the ones that you want and you can see I'll tick IP address mode server firmware version license type support expiry date MAC address hotfixes client version time server and description TMS server discovery method which is auto in this case time zone kernel version TFM version so I've got nearly everything sele selected I haven't bothered with the serial number or the TMS server name or the TMS server port because uh, I want to fit all these on my screen so okay once you've done all that you just click on save in my case I don't need to do that because it's already configured so I'll just cancel so now that TMS is running it'll detect um, the TLXOS devices um, using uh, different discovery methods so to find out what they are let's have a quick look at the tools configuration TMS server discovery and this is the different discovery methods so this is how we get the client to connect to the system that's running TMS so that whatever it is Raspberry Pi or the NUC it needs to know how to connect to the um, TMS server which could be anywhere in the world so we have three different methods uh, and the defaults auto so with auto the first thing it's going to try and do is use DHCP option flags so if you've got your uh, TLXOS device in another city or somewhere else in the world and you've set up a DHCP server at that remote location to provide the information through DHCP option flags the client will know the um, name of the TMS server to connect to and also um, the port number so that's done with DHCP option flags so this is all in the TMS user guide that you can download and explains how to set these up uh, the next one we've got is static discovery so that's the second thing that TMS will use DHCP to start with then static now static it's already configured here where I've given it a host name of TMS so if you set up your DNS system so that TMS points to the system running TMS you don't need to configure anything here because it'll know straight away that TMS resolves to whatever the IP address is of the system running TMS so um, that's designed to make things a little bit easier for you and then if neither DHCP option flags are set and static uh, doesn't provide a connection but the system tries to use the UDP broadcast packet that's sent by TMS but the only problem with that is it only works on a single subnet so it's only useful for small networks so they're the different discovery methods that we use so I'll just cancel that let's have a look at the icons along the top here we've got discover you can see that's pre-selected so under discover it's sending UDP broadcast packets depending on the discovery order that you we just talked about if you click it it turns off UDP broadcasting so it's just off so this folders just have it on uh, the next one we've got here 
is name so you can change the device host name so to be able to do that you have to select the checkbox on the device that you want to change the name so this one the Raspberry Pi let's say I want to change that to something else I've got to select the box checkbox here then I can click on name and then I can put in a different name click on OK and now the host name's changed and the message changed host name has appeared here in the status box so that's very useful for setting an actual host name for the device and right down the other end is, or you can also set a description if you want to um, for a more descriptive name. Host names are restricted to the characters that you can use in a host name so you, at least you've got an option to put a more descriptive name um, as well just for your own use. So and the next one is the mode so I'll just select the nut for this one if I click on mode I get a list of all the different modes that we support and um, at the moment it's in Citrix HDX mode and we also support SSH RDP which is Microsoft Remote Desktop Protocol or VNC X11 which is a Linux um, Remote Desktop Protocol TCM is a um, the Linux Connection Manager, which is under development, so I won't go into more details about that yet. Spice, Red Hat Spice Remote Desktop Protocol. Web is just a web browser, Chromium. NX is No Machines Client for their Remote Desktop Protocol. Telnet, which is an old protocol but still used and still useful. Uh, TN3270 is IBM mainframe client. Horizon VMware, that's uh, VMware's Horizon Blast Extreme client, which uses H.264. Performance Monitor, that runs a program called NMON, which is used for monitoring things like CPU load, network load, memory, etc. A user defined bespoke mode. Some of our customers have their own applications that they want to launch, and they using this user defined bespoke mode, they can launch their own application. Digital signage we support um, playing images in a loop, um, videos in a loop, or um, web browser content in kiosk mode. Media player is a Linux media player. So those are the different um, modes that are available. So I'll just hit cancel.